वेलकम वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑफ एंटी एंजाइनल वैसोडाइलेटर्स एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द कार्डियक प्रॉब्लम्स द सी डी सी दैट इज सेंटर फॉर डिजीज कंट्रोल एंड प्रिवेंशन सेज दैट हार्ट डिजीज इज द मेन कॉज ऑफ डेथ ऑल अराउंड द वर्ल्ड the cardiovascular disease there are several types and with happens because of multiple causes there is a word that is a terminology named as atherosclerosis atherosclerosis happens when a fatty material called plaque builds up on the inside wall of the artery that make the arteries hard for blood to move through them the artery are tubes that carry the blood from heart to other part of the body so this atherosclerosis can cause symptoms of heart disease like heart attack and angina which is a chest pain so what is a chest pain what is the angina angina is a type of chest pain which is caused by reduced blood flow to the heart it is a symptom of coronary artery disease angina is also called angina pectoris and this is oftenly described as squeezing pressure heaviness tightness or pain in the chest there are various chemical entities like protein some cardiovascular agents which helps in controlling the cardiovascular disease but selection of these cardiovascular agents in the chemical are very important because the cardiac problems they are vast in nature they are multiple in nature they can be angina they can be the cardiac arrhythmias they can be hypertension erectile dysfunction hyperlipidemias and some disorder of the blood coagulation so when the doctor or the physician is prescribing some medicines or the pharmacist is dispensing the medicine the, the pathophysiology of the cardiovascular disease must be known and the symptoms must be matched completely matched with the said problem is it angina or a heart attack how can we differentiate between the angina and heart attack angina which is a having a symptoms like chest tightness or discomfort these are also very similar to the warning sign of a heart attack however the angina happens when patient heart is not getting enough blood usually because of the narrowed coronary artery the key difference between the angina and a heart attack is that angina is the result of narrowed coronary artery narrowed rather than blocked i'm saying narrowed this is why unlike a heart attack angina does not cause the permanent heart damage while the heart attack cause a permanent heart damage some people they experience episodes of angina before having a heart attack and may continue to experience it there after also and some people they never experience angina before or after a heart attack so situation may be depend person to person so as i said the symptoms of angina are discomfortness heaviness or tightness of the chest 
which may spread to the back, shoulder, neck or jaw, discomfort in the arm and discomfort in the uh, with neck or jaw with no chest discomfort. So this discomfort in the arm and neck or jaw with no discom chest discomfort. Sometimes it feels in the chest, some, sometimes it's not feel in the chest, it's discomfort, it happens in the arm. This discomfort, whether it is in the arm, neck, jaw or the chest, this dis discomfort can range from mild or dull to severe. We can say this angina pectoris, it is the principal symptom of the ischemic heart disease, which is characterized by a severe constriction pain in the chest, which is often opening radiating from the pericardium to the left shoulder and down to the arm, to the left shoulder and down to the arm. The principal goal in the prevention and relief of angina is to limit the oxygen requirement of the heart so that the amount of the blood supplied by the stenosed artery is adequate. There are several compounds which are used as an anti-anginal drugs. You can see here in the diagram that what is the coronary artery disease, here there is a plaque build up in the artery. The angina which is harder for blood to get through the artery and the heart attack, the plague cracks and the blood clot block the artery. So this is how the angina and heart attack is discussed. Now talk about the anti-anginal drugs. So the most common anti-anginal drugs which are used to treat the angina pectoris, they are the vasodilator and cardiac depressant. Calcium channel blockers works as a vasodilator as well as cardiac depressant. Nitrates, they work as a vasodilator. And the beta blocker they work as a cardiac depressant. Now come to the first drug of this category, it is amyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite, which is the IOPEC name is pentyl nitrite, and it is an antihypertensive medicine. And this medicine it belongs to a class of organic compound known as orthonitroso compound. These are the organic compounds containing a N nitroso group O N double bond O. Amyl nitrite it is employed medically. To the, treatment, to the treatment of heart diseases such as angina and to treat the cyanide poisoning. It's, it is also used as a prescription medicine and to lower the blood pressure. It also used as inhalant as it contains the psychoactive effect or activity. And because of this psychoactive effect of this amyl nitrite, it comes under the illegal drug trade. And on a broad way, it is used for rapid relief of the angina pectoris. This is a very uh, common with other alkyl nitrite, and it is a very potent vasodilator. It expands the blood vessels, which result in lowering of the blood pressure. So, in the same way, it is the magnesium fraction of amyl nitrite that it is it produces the reduction in the systemic and pulmonary artery pressure and decrease the cardiac output because of the peripheral vasodilation rather than coronary artery dilation. So it do what it does, 
it does the peripheral vasodilation rather than coronary artery dilation. This amylonitrite is a source of nitric oxide, which accounts for the mechanism described uh, in many books, and it is as an antidote. That is for the cyanide poisoning. This amyl nitrate it promotes the formation of the methemoglobin, which combines with the cyanide to form non-toxic cyanmethanoglobin. The next compound in this category is nitroglycerin. This nitroglycerin, it is belongs to a class of known as alkyl nitrates, just like the previous one, and it is the vasodilator used for the treatment of chest pain and high blood pressure. This nitroglycerin. Is nitroglycerin is available in various forms, including spray, sublingual tablets, intravenous forms, extended release tablets, transdermal patches. It also used to treat the preoperative hypertension or induce intraoperative hypotension. It is also used to treat the acute heart failure in patient with the myocardial infarction. The transdermal patches form is applied directly to the skin of these nitroglycerin to prevent the acute anginal attacks. Now the mechanism which is involved in the activity of the nitroglycerin, that nitroglycerin is converted by the mitochondrial aldehyde dehydrogenase to nitric oxide, which is an active substance, which further become activates activate the enzyme guanolite cyclase. This guanolite cyclase on activation is followed by the synthesis of cyclic guanosine 3 5 monophosphate that is CGMP. The activating cascade of a protein kinase dependent phosphorylation event in smooth muscle. You have to remember this sequence. The nitroglycerin is first converted by the mitochondrial aldehyde dehydrogenase that is MTALDH. To nitric oxide. This active substance, this is an active substance which then activates the another enzyme which is guanolite uh, cyclase. On activation of this enzyme, guanolite cyclase, it is followed by the synthesis of cyclic guanosine 3 5 monophosphate that is CGMP. After activating a cascade of the protein kinase dependent phosphorylation event occurs in the smooth muscles and finally the process lead to the dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain of smooth muscles and this dephosphorylation of myosin light chain of smooth muscles it caused the relaxation and increased blood flow in the rain, vein arteries and even cardiac tissues this is how the this nitroglycerin works Again, I am repeat that the nitroglycerin is first converted by the mitochondrial aldehyde dehydrogenase MTALDH to nitric oxide, which is an active substance, which then activates another enzyme, which is guanylate cyclase. On activation of this guanide guanylate cyclase, it is followed by the synthesis of the cyclic guanosine 3 5 monophosphate, that is CGMP, and on activation of this cascade of protein kinase dependent phosphorylation even occurs in smooth muscles and this process 
finally lead to the dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain of repose buffer and this dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain in the smooth muscle cause the relaxation and increase blood flow in vein artery and cardiac tissues this nitroglycerin is very rapidly absorbed that's why it is often used in the emergency situation of the angina the next compound in this category is penta erythritol tetranitrate penta erythritol tetranitrate this drug penta erythritol tetranitrate is 22 bis hydroxymethyl 13 propane diol tetranitrate This drug is a nitric acid ester of the tetrahydric alcohol penta erythritol. Remember, this drug is very explosive in nature. However, we use very limited amount of this penta erythritol tetranitrate. So, for this, this penta erythritol tetranitrate it is diluted with lactose, mannitol. or other suitable inert diluent to permit the surface uh, uh, safe handling this drug relax smooth muscles of smaller vessels in the coronary vasculature and it is used especially for the prophylactically to reduce the severity and frequency of the anginal attack this is one, one more drug which is erythritol tetranitrate do not confuse with that drug this is penta erythritol tetranitrate and that drug is erythritol tetranitrate and that drug erythritol tetranitrate is prepared in the same manner like the nitroglycerin Now the next drug in this class of anti-anginal drug, isosorbide dinitrate. This compound belongs to a class of organic compound known as isosorbide. These are the organic polycyclic compound containing an isosorbide that is one four dienhydrosorbitol moiety, which consists of Two oxalo oxalane three ol ring. This is the vasodilator used in the treatment of angina pectoris, and the action is very similar to the nitroglycerin, but with a slower onset of it, onset of action. There are some associated conditions in which this drug is used, just like coronary artery disease, heart failure, and hypertension. like we have discussed the mechanism of action of the nitroglycerin the arco isosorbide is also work in the same way converted first into the active nitric oxide to activate the guanylate cyclase and this activation increases the level of cyclic guanosine 3,5 monophosphate cgmp and the cgmp activates protein kinase and cause series of the phosphorylation reaction which leads to the dephosphorylation of the myosin which are the light chain of the smooth muscle fiber and then finally there is a release of calcium ion which cause a smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation now how this isosorbide it is synthesized isosorbide nitrile nitrate that is 1436 dienhydrosorbate 25 dinitrate it is 
synthesized by in intermolecular dehydration of desorbide using a paratolmine sulfonic acid and which further on nitration of the two hydroxyl group by nitric acid gives isosorbide so this synthesis is very simple the next drug in this category is dipyridamol this dipyridamol is a compound belongs to a class of organic compound known as dialkyl aryl amine aliphatic aromatic amine in which amino group is linked to two aliphatic chains and one aromatic group this is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor that blocks the uptake and met metabolism of adenosine by erythrocyte and vascular endothelial cell so this is used adjunct to the coumarin anticoagulant in the prevention of post operative thromboembolic complications of cardiac valve replacement and obviously as an anti anginal drug associated condition in which it can be used is the coronary artery disease post operative thromboembolism stroke thrombotic event etc this is about the vasodilators which are used as anti anginal drug 